Not a soul. Clock. Not a soul. Clock. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Roberto Cristian, but you may call me Robbie for short. And today, we're giving Pokemon teams to the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 8. Number zero in my Discord server suggested that the Queen of the Fame games should be the conscious champion of the region since it's about runways and fashion. You can also make suggestions like this by joining the server using the link in the description or in the comments below. I thought that was a splendid idea and decided that the entire video should follow this format since we only have 12 queens instead of the necessary 13. The winner of this all-Star season will still be treated as a champion wretch trainer with a team of six. Make sure to subscribe for more Drag Race crossovers as well as more Pokemon content coming your way. And without further ado, let's get started. If you're unfamiliar with Pokemon contests, they were a feature in the Hoenn and Sinnoh games and a central part of the Pokemon anime with Mei and Dawn's characters. Pokemon contests focus on the Pokemon's move combinations and overall appeal instead of their battle prowess, similar to pageants in real life. Pokemon trainers who participate in these contests are referred to as Pokemon coordinators, and I will do the same with these queens. Contests are divided into two categories, a performance stage, similar to a talent show, and a battle stage. The contest format for this video will begin with a performance stage in which the contestants will showcase their Pokemon's talents. The goal is to impress the judges and earn the highest score possible. Only eight of the queens will move on to the next stage. Let's start with Monica Beverly Hills. Monica came with the goal of inspiring other trans youth to be their authentic self. She is from season five and a rock type gym leader from her region. So I'm keeping her contest team as the same type she specializes in. Her first Pokemon is Sudowoodo based on her Fruity Patootie runway. This is one of the choices from my season five video. The outfit resembles a mango tree, just like Sudowoodo. Well, Sudowoodo is not a mango tree. It's just a fake tree made out of rock. You get the point. It also confirmed to me that this is her main partner that she would bring to any challenge. Her second Pokemon is Solrock, based on her Miss Fill in the Blank runway. Monica here is referencing her character from an acting challenge in season 5. She's Miss Sunlight on the skin, and since she's a rock type specialist, it made sense to give her a Pokemon that resembles the sun. I think these two Pokemon would perform really well together. I can imagine them telling a visual story about the beauty of nature since Sudowoodo resembles a tree and Soul Rock resembles the sun about, by using a combo of Sunny Day and Solar Beam, respectively. As the first eliminated queen this season, she would be one of the Pokemon coordinators that wouldn't move on to the next stage. Next, we have the Puerto Rican beauty, Neisha Lopez. Neisha is a Miss Continental winner, which I consider the Miss Universe of drag pageants in the US. Her first Pokemon is Lumineon, based on the press week look she wore to promote the season in New York. I genuinely enjoy how this Pokemon's color scheme complements this dress. The shape of the bodice also makes me think of its butterfly-like fins. I chose Lumineon because it would have good synergy with her next Pokemon, as Lumineon has the ability to swim, which raises its speed in the rain. That second Pokemon is Politoed, based on her famous now runway. Politoed can possess Drizzle as its ability, which summons rain once it enters the field. Her famous now runway is a gorgeous lime green swimsuit with a detachable neon pink skirt that complements Politoed's color scheme extremely well. Fun fact! Did you know that Neisha in 2021 was the first runner-up in a swimsuit category of the Mr. Continental pageant? It's like Miss Continental, but you're competing out of drag. I was impressed when I read this in the community wiki because it basically confirmed this Pokemon team. Her early elimination means that Neisha too would not progress to the next stage. I can imagine the crowd gasping in disbelief that she was eliminated so early. Her Miss Continental title makes me believe that she would be a household name in the world of Pokemon contests, much like Fantina from the Sinnoh region. The final contestant we'll cover before we move on to the battle stage is Heidi M. Closet. As elevated as her drag has become, Heidi felt very overlooked by the judges throughout the season. Because of this and many other factors, she decided to quit the competition, which made her ineligible for the fame games. In honor of this tragic loss, I'm announcing our next Drag Race crossover will tackle season 12. I didn't want to exclude Heidi from this video altogether, so I decided to have her as a guest during the contest, a sort of entertainment portion that showcases her talents to the best of her abilities as a top coordinator. Yes, you heard that right. Heidi won the Miss Congeniality title during season 12, so I thought it would be appropriate to imagine her being praised in a way she wasn't on the show. She is the most popular queen out of all the contestants from this season, after all. Her first Pokemon is Milsery, based on her legendary runway. 
This choice is very straightforward, as Heidi is dressed as a milkman, or milkwoman in this case, and Milsuri's body is made out of cream. It also reminded me of Silky's runway from All Star 6, which I paired with an alchemy for that video. Her second Pokemon is Behem, based on her promo look. I felt this was a fitting choice, as Behem's body resembles a trench coat, which Heidi is wearing here. It's a more dragged out and elevated version, which makes me think of Behem's pointed features. I like to believe that this duo has huge potential in the talent stage. I can imagine Milstery using moves like Sweet Scent and Aromatic Mist to set the mood for the show. Then have Behem use Psychic. Uh, to lift Milsuri up in the air as Heidi throws a strawberry sweet for Milsuri to catch, referencing her fruity patootie look. Behem spins Milsuri around and causes it to evolve into an alchemy with a ruby swirl, referencing her supermarket supermodel runway. The crowd cheers with so much excitement as they witness one of the greatest performances in the history of Pokemon contests. As this showcase comes to a close and the crowd bursts with motivation, we move on to the battle stage. In this tournament style competition, the eight remaining coordinators will battle each other in brackets, and they will still have only two Pokemon at their disposal. This is a Pokemon contest, so their goal is to outshine their competitor rather than defeat them. Let's start with our first preliminary battle, with Mrs. Kasha Davis going up against Jessica Wilde. Mrs. Kasha Davis's drag aesthetic is very much that of a housewife with kids because that's exactly what she is in real life. I can imagine her doing these contests for sport, of course, but mostly for fun. Her first choice is Butterfree, based on her net gala runway. The choice speaks for itself. The look is adorned with multiple butterflies around her waist and shoulders, and she's even holding a bug catching net in her hand. Her second Pokemon is Apom, based on her fruity patootie runway. This was a fun choice on my part. Apom is based on a monkey, and monkeys are known for liking bananas. That's it. <laughs> In terms of the talent portion, I'm thinking she could use moves like Pollen Puff and Rage Powder to make Butterfree the center of attention and create obstacles for Apom to maneuver throughout the performance. Ultimately, I like to think that she chooses Pokemon that she really likes rather than ones that would work best competitively. You'll recall in Episode 3 uh, that Jessica Wilde won her lip sync, which gave her the power to eliminate Mrs. Kasha Davis from the competition. Since that's how it happened in the show, let's have Jessica be the winner of this round as well. We'll talk about Jessica's team later on in the video. For the second preliminary battle, we have Darian Lake facing Alexis Michelle. Darian considers herself a comedy queen, though she wasn't able to fully showcase her comedic talents this season. I love how she ran smear campaigns on Twitter <laughs> against her against her fellow Fame Games contestants in order for people to vote for her. Her first Pokemon is Clamperl, based on her famous then runway. Anytime she walked the runway, RuPaul would introduce her by saying, dip into the cool, refreshing waters of Darien Lake. I wanted to include a Pokemon that inhabits lakes in real life. She typically wears sequin looks with shiny jewelry, so Clam Pearl felt like an appropriate choice. Her second Pokemon is Aromatease, based on her promo look for All Stars 8. Darian proudly talked about her weight loss journey during the beginning of the show, which gave her a newfound confidence to wear gorgeous dresses like this one. This look is curvy and flattering. It reminds me of Aromatease because of its matching color scheme and its similar pose. She also looks like she smells nice in this picture, and Aromatease is inspired by perfume. I can imagine her Clam Pearl using moves like Whirlpool and or Brine, and Aromatease using Dazzling Gleam to make a sort of light show by playing with the concept of refraction. You'll likely remember a memorable moment from Alexis in the fourth episode in which she threw Darian under the bus, so to speak, during the judges' critique. With this moment in mind, I find it appropriate to imagine Alexis as the winner of this battle. And we'll talk about Alexis's team in the semifinals. The third preliminary battle stars James Mansfield against Candy Muse. James had a pretty good run this season, and I think her popularity on YouTube helped her be in good standing with production by pushing her further in their competition. Which is a good thing, because she was eliminated the very first episode of her original season. We got to see, or at least I did, because I've never watched her stuff, a lot more of her drag aesthetic. She's comedic, very campy, and I can see the following Pokemon team working very well for her in a contest setting. Her first Pokemon is Smoochum, based on her entrance look. The dress is wonderfully pink, 
old Hollywood glam and very cute. This is one of those pairings that is simply so perfect that they cannot exist without each other. They even share the same expression. Her second Pokemon is Rufflet, based on her As the World Turns runway. She paid homage to her indigenous Mexican heritage, which made me think of Rufflet's evolution, Braviary, because the feathers on its head are inspired by those traditional headpieces Native Americans wear, similar to the ones James is wearing here. I can imagine James instructing her Smoochum to build a roller coaster like course made out of ice for Rufflet to perform on. It's an idea I got from the Pokemon anime in which John does exactly that during a performance round with her Boniri and Pipla. James was up for elimination in the sixth episode of the show. Candy Muse, as the winner of the lip sync, eliminated James from the competition, making Candy the winner of this round. We'll talk about the Pokemon that Candy brought to this contest later on. The final preliminary battle sees Kahana Montrese against Lala Ri. Kahana's drag went through a striking evolution. Her Vegas-inspired runways this season definitely made choosing her team a lot easier. Her first Pokemon is Empoleon, based on her Net Gala runway. The Trident completely sold me on this pairing, as Empoleon borrows inspiration from the Greek god Poseidon. It definitely helps that the light blue color scheme matches extremely well with this Pokemon. Her second Pokemon is Cryogonal, based on her Snow Bunny runway. This is by far my favorite look of her entire runway package this season. She took a snowflake and made it look editorial. It's a very gorgeous outfit. What ties this choice together for me is the fact that Cryogonal can learn the move Acrobatics, which is important for Kahana as she has a cheerleading background. I can imagine Kahana using a combination of Empoleon's Brine and Drillpeck to simulate rain in a creative way, with Cryogonal's Blizzard to create a snowy, sparkly environment. Then she could take advantage of the sleet, which I just learned means frozen rain, to perform a dance number on the stage and showcase Cryogonal's acrobatics. Lala won the seventh episode's lip sync, eliminating Kahana from the competition, which makes Lala the winner for this battle. With all the preliminary battles decided, we move on to the semifinals. And this is where I take a water break. Still following the same format, we have our first battle of the semi-final, Candy Muse versus Lala Ri. Candy Muse is a member of the same Pokemon League as Lala Ri, which makes this battle very interesting. Candy is a fighting type specialist and an elite four member from her region. She's well known as an intimidating and strong Pokemon trainer, so it came as no surprise that she would dominate the competition. For this contest, she's accompanied by her first Pokemon, her trusty companion, Beware based on her Miss Fill in the Blank runway. Beware is one of the choices I made for my Season 13 video. You know, the very first video in this series I ever made. She came to the runway in this look inspired by her dress from the bag ball on her original season. And let me tell you, I gasped. Because that bag ball eleganza look is why I gave her Beware in my original video. Coincidence? In the words of the great opener of doors, Gia Gunn, Absolutely. But a confirmation for me, nonetheless. It's the same dress that she was wearing during that untucked moment when she got called arrogant, hence Miss Arrogant as her fill in the blank. Her second Pokemon is Cherim, based on her Fruity Patootie runway. This is a very straightforward choice. Cherim evolves from Cheruby, which is based on a cherry, and cherries are the inspiration for Candy's look. I debated for a while about whether to give her a Cheruby or a Cherim, because Cheruby is a very close choice to the look, while Cherim could have a better competitive edge. So I decided on both. Let me explain. In the Pokemon anime, it's not uncommon for Pokemon to evolve mid-battle. They can evolve when they feel endangered, or in this case, when they feel like they need a competitive advantage. I can imagine Candy's Cheruby evolving during one of those rounds for this same reason. She could have used Sunny Day to summon sunlight, change Cherim from its overcast form into its sunshine form, and have that be the deciding factor that won her the battle. This time, however, Candy wasn't so lucky. This high-stakes battle culminates with Lala Ri as the winner. It feels appropriate, considering Candy was in the bottom with Lala in episode 8, and consequently made it farther than her in the competition, which makes Candy ineligible for the fan games. For the next battle of the semi-final, we have Alexis Michelle versus Jessica Wilde. Alexis is known for her Broadway experience, so I wanted both of her choices to confidently reflect her theatrical abilities. Her first Pokemon is Zoroa, based on her Knight of a Thousand Grey Stones' runway. This Pokemon felt like the most indisputable choice, 
as Zoroa has the signature ability Illusion, allowing it to disguise itself into another Pokémon. Zoroa's Pokédex entry in Ultra Sun talks about how it has a cowardly disposition, so when it's not around friends, it basically always strays transformed as something else. I also enjoy how the color scheme contrasts very nicely. Her second Pokémon is Lightbird, based on her I'm a Winner Baby runway. This episode had the challenge of designing a look inspired by previous All-Stars winners. Alexis was paired with a chest full of drag materials representing Trinity Attack. This pairing felt like an excellent opportunity to reference Pokemon on, on Trinity's champion team for my All-Star 7 video. It also felt important to highlight Alexis's only challenge win in the competition. I can imagine her putting on a show during the performance stage with Zoroa's illusion ability. Both of these Pokemon are also capable of learning the move Fake Tears, which lowers the opponent's special defense, creating an opening to attack during the battle stage. This round is hilarious to me because of the memes of Jessica being tired of Alexis Michelle crying and then finally voting her off the show. Jessica Wilde ends up as the winner, so dramatic, so funny, totally makes sense with my French vanilla fantasy, and is set to face Lala Ri in the finals. With the semifinals decided, we have our final battle for this Pokemon contest. We already know who our top coordinators are for this round, so let's finally talk about Jessica's team. Jessica's appearance on the show comes 13 years after her original season, and she did a fantastic job. She's made all the Puerto Ricans proud, including myself. Her first Pokemon is Executor, based on her lip sync for your legacy look. I like this idea since Executor is based on a palm tree and she lip synced to Coconuts by Kim Petrus. Executor is also one of the original 151 Pokemon, which many people carry a lot of nostalgia for. Jessica is in a similar situation since her original season was season 2. Her second Pokemon is Obstagoon, based on her famous Forever runway. Jessica has always had a rocker chick drag aesthetic that I wanted to honor with this choice. She made me think of Pierce, the dark type gym leader from Sword and Shield who has a similar style. I can imagine her doing a rock performance together with her Pokemon during the talent stage and I just think that would be really cool to see. Jessica, as we mentioned earlier, is up against Lala Ri. She is one of the most charismatic queens to grace the RuPaul's Drag Race stage. As a Miss Congeniality winner, Lala stands a very good chance at winning the title of Queen of the Pain Games. Her first Pokemon is Ribombi, based on her entrance look. I mainly focused on the outfit's color scheme as they contrast very well together. I also like to think the glasses and the pointy shoulder pads resemble its wings. Her second Pokemon is Flapple, based on her fruity patootie runway. This was another straightforward choice, as she wore a dress that resembles an apple. I paired these two Pokemon together for the simple concept of apples and honey. I can imagine Lala having Ribombi use moves like Pollen Puff and Sweet Scent to energize Flapple's Grab Apple attack during the performance stage and heal Flapple during the battle stage. The timer finishes, the stage becomes calm, and the crowd goes silent with anticipation. After rigorous competition and a very fierce final battle, the queen named the top coordinator for this grand festival is Lala Ri. Congratulations to our Queen of the Fame games. I guess you could say that all the Miss Congeniality winners are canonically top coordinators in this Pokemon world. But we still have one more queen to discuss the winner of the grand prize of All-Stars 8, and a champion-ranked trainer, Jimbo. Being an All-Stars winner means being recognized as a champion-ranked trainer, just as I've done with queens like Kylie Sunny Glove and Alaska, and Jimbo is no different. Jimbo's Drag Race journey spans three seasons across three different franchises, all in three different countries. She first appeared in Canada's Drag Race Season 1, followed by another strong running in UK vs. The World. Third time was indeed the charm for Jimbo, as she came to the American version of the show to finally snatch the crown. For Jimbo's team, I wanted to maintain a theme of pink and purple as a good portion of her runways follow that color scheme. Let's start by giving her a jinx, based on her promo look for All Stars 8, and build a team around it. Jimbo has been the subject of multiple controversial issues, most recently with her entrance look for All-Stars 8, which showcases an enormous chest plate. This big-breasted drag aesthetic is part of Jimbo's brand, but some people accused her of mocking women, which I'm sure is not the case, but we're not going to talk about that here. I thought it was most fitting to entrust Jimbo with a Jinx, a Pokemon featured in a now-banned Christmas episode after being accused by Carol Weatherford. I'll tell you who she is in a minute, of stereotyping black women. Carol Weatherford, by the way, is an African-American author and an English professor at Fayetteville, Fayetteville State University in North Carolina. I didn't know of her until researching this. 
Jinx had a bit of a redesign afterward. Its seemingly black complexion was changed to purple. The Pokemon company had to overhaul their entire franchise, episodes were re-edited, game sprites were modified, and trading cards were recolored. Aside from the negative reception though, Jinx is a perfect partner for Jimbo. It's an ice type, which alludes to her Canadian nationality. But its combination with Psychic renders it vulnerable to even more Pokemon types. So let's work on these weaknesses with the rest of her team. Jimbo's second Pokemon is Mr. Mime, based on her Canuck Couture fantasy runway from Canada Season 1. Jimbo has made a name for herself as a drag clown, and this look is the closest she's looked to the typical representation of a clown, colorful with a bow tie and a tiny hat. Mr. Mime is usually found on teams with NPCs with the trainer class, so what better Pokemon to pair her up with than this one? Its fairy typing also fares well against Jinx's dark type weakness. Her third Pokemon is Jellicent, based on her Miss Fill in the Blank runway from All Stars 8. Jimbo has also built a brand on big breastplates like we mentioned before. I kept seeing this Pokemon paired up with Jimbo among other drag race Pokemon creators online and thought it would be a disservice to not do the same. Jellicent's ghost typing also kinda references her weird clown creature that throws baloney everywhere as ghost types are mischievous like that. Her fourth Pokemon is Furfro, based on her pageant perfection runway from Canada Season 1. You know, that infamous moment in which the judges panel said this look was not glamorous by any means? I for one think it's a very glamorous look. This Furfro in particular would have a matron trim to match the pink and purple color scheme of this team. All of her team members thus far are weak to ghosts, so a Pokemon with a ghost type immunity makes for an effective defensive strategy. Her fifth Pokemon is Beware, based on her Snatch King performance from All Stars this is Jimbo's version of Shirley Temple, and it was hilarious. She's holding a little doll instead of a teddy bear, but it's the same reason as my choice for Coco Montrese's Beware in my Season 5 video. Beware also has an immunity to Ghost, and its fighting type moves offer coverage against the multiple weaknesses across Jimbo's team. Her final Pokemon is a Lowland Muck, based on her famous Forever Runway from All Stars 8. That first episode really solidified Jimbo's creative prowess in her runways. This particular look is very colorful and contrasts very well with Alolan Mutt's design. Its dual poison and dark typing also offers excellent defensive coverage that balances the rest of the team. What do you think of my choices? Let me know in the comments what you would have chosen, and subscribe for more Pokemon content! Share this video with everyone you know, or don't know, and stay tuned for the next iteration of Drag Race Pokemon Teams as we cover Season 12. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and as always, I appreciate you being here. Bye!